So what are you weird. cheesing out over there, Alec? We were laughing at your reference. Braveheart yeah, you connected it to Mel Gibson. Because <laughs> he calls that dude with the goatee Mel Gibson. Yeah. Like, that's what he calls <laughs> that dude. Because he looks like Braveheart. <laughs> I thought you were doing that on purpose. <laughs> Me too. I was like, what a great I tie in. Welcome to the What's Already podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Crowder. I'm here with my co host, Mattson Heiner. Better red than dead. And Allie Burgess. Let's get it. We appreciate your help growing the podcast. Go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button. Tell a friend about us. Go check out our website, whatsoverdict.com, where you can listen to all of our episodes. Sign up for our newsletter, get exclusive content and updates, and pick up some sweet, sweet merch. The question we always ask is if you ever find yourself wondering if you should spend the time, money, or both on a movie. To help with that question, each week we put a movie on trial, discuss the facts, pass judgment, and let you know our verdict. Today we're reviewing Ambulance. It was released April 8th, 2022. It was written by Chris Fedak. It was directed by Michael Bay. It stars Yahya Abdul-Mateen, Jake Gyllenhaal, Isaac Gonzalez, Garrett Dillahunt, Jackson White, Kiro O'Donnell, Moses Ingram, and A. Martinez. Two brothers are caught in a police chase in a stolen ambulance after a bank heist goes wrong. If you haven't seen this movie, you want to avoid spoilers. Now it's time to pause the podcast. Go check out our spoiler-free review on YouTube, which you can find a link below in our show notes, or go watch the movie and then come back and pick up where you left off either way because we're going to spoil the shit out of this thing. So let's talk about Ambulance. First off, I didn't know this. This was a remake of a Danish movie called Ambulance. And as I read the stuff about it, I don't know. I was like, okay, I can see where this is a remake. However... Chris Fedak is a writer. Like, I was really excited when I saw he was writing it. And then I was, like, equally not excited when I saw Michael Bay was directing it because I just want to get this out in the open. I talked a little bit about it in Spoiler Free. I've mentioned it in this podcast before when we've talked and done Michael Bay films, but the guy's a fucking clown. Look, he can make some action movies that are crazy, have some cool action blow them up scenes and shit, but he just goes too far. Like, if he were to do the cool shit that he does once or twice in a movie like he used to like his original like some of his earlier movies are really really good and then you have things like this where it's just like god michael bay did this and you can tell if i saw one more fucking cop car run into a parked car on the side of the road i was gonna lose my (laughs) shit it's such a michael bay thing to do it's in every one of his films it's like do these people just not know how to drive like there's brakes you don't have to hit the car. Jesus. My thing was the original bank heist, they pull out 32 million, but 24 million of that gets recovered, right? Or something like that. So they're left with 16 million. Yeah. Like they caused way more than 16 million in damages trying to get it back. At that point, like as soon as you know who these guys are, you go get them later. Yeah. <laughs> You end the police chase and you, you know, regroup and you, you know, get them later. Like, and you know who this Danny guy is really early as the, the police understand that this is Danny really early. You automatically check for known associates. They're going to figure out that his, he has a brother and they're going to go to the brother's house pretty early on. Like it just makes this is the worst police work on the planet. And then they try to make these guys look like superheroes in their cool fucking trucks and their like the lady who, who was one of them drive a Nissan Skyline GTR as a cop car, right? Let alone all the freaking Dodge Chargers that are nutted up. And I realize they have those, but why would you put Charger on the side of your cop car? Like Michael Bay. I did like the more incognito police that they put on it on sure. the sides. Like the boss, I was like, man, we should look into that. It was kind of cool. Yeah. I, my brother-in-law used but to have not flames. At the same time because I'll get a ticket. Yeah, exactly. Well, my brother-in-law used to have flames on the side of his truck. They, they call them ghost flames. And so they, they look like that. They, you can only catch them in certain light and then they're not there. So, I mean, Ooh. they have those for real, for real. They're stylish. I, I could see myself getting into that. I want to talk about something that I just thought was so interesting that they were so concerned about not shooting cops and then ultimately trying to save this one cop's life. And then Taylor, this whole time, my wife, and it was like, how many cops have either already died in this chase or been severely injured? And they're still so concerned about this one cop and keeping them alive. <laughs> I'm like, well, if the cop that ran into that, the water bins or the other cars or one of the cop cars that got the top of it's shaved yeah. off because it went underneath like a semi, like 
are they attributing that to like, oh, that cop's a bad driver. Like that's their <laughs> fault. Like, or they, they, it got kind of outlandish at the end because all these other cops are like, well, am I not important then? Are we just, we care about this one guy in the middle. And then by the end, they cared about the cop, but they were going to sacrifice the girl to like end it all. And I'm like, no, like that's going to be worse for them on TV if she dies. And that's why the movie should have ended 30 to 40 minutes earlier because they wouldn't have had to kept stretching that suspension of disbelief. And then I could have been like, you know, some cops are going to get messed up in this car chase. That's how it goes. But they still want to save this one guy if they can before they got to cut their losses. They just took way too long to get to that point. Yeah. Well, my biggest problem with what you're talking about was even before the part where they were talking about killing her was you call to get this plan of this military just drive away kind of thing, which I thought was pretty interesting. But then why set the ambush with the fucking minigun? Do you think you're not going to kill at least a couple of cops when you ambush them with a minigun drive? Like you didn't need to do that when the whole point was you were in your situation to keep a cop alive, which is the smartest thing because if the cop survives, the charges are, I mean, you're still going to get some serious charges for shooting a cop. But if he doesn't die, you don't get a murder charge, right? You don't even get an attempted murder charge, most likely, because you could say it was an accidental shooting, whatever the hell you want to say. But to then set these guys up to, like, blow up and then chain gun, like, freaking minigun a freaking whole group of cops, like, you just negated everything you've been Did trying to do. Did he know about do. the chain gun? He definitely knew about explosives. Yeah, I don't know. They didn't do a and good didn't job of that. he didn't want that to happen. Yeah. But at the same time, like, what is he going to tell the cartel to be like, nah, like. Yeah. I think he might have suspected it, but, you know, that's the plausible. I, he had a lot of other stuff going on. Let's give him that because he was dealing with a guy that needed to spray his ambulance blue and ultimately <laughs> you know, like bright green. I'm like, if I'm the cops, I mean, I guess I could have thrown like, they'd be like, Oh, there's a green one. Like, Oh no, don't go for that one. Because that's clearly not the one we're looking for, which totally would have worked. But I mean, that part was funny, but also kind of random, but funny. Yeah. That guy better get employee of the year. I swear. <laughs> well, then he hey, gets uh, out. He's like, "Yeah, bring a paint sprayer." <laughs> well, it, well, not even. But then he, the cops pull him over, and he's like, "I don't know. I just was in this thing all of a sudden." And yeah, I'm like, "What was the funny. hell are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> the inconsistencies in this movie drove me crazy. Like, it annoyed the shit out of me how inconsistent it was, and I think it only annoyed me like because of how good. Here's what I would like to see in this movie: I want an hour and a half movie of these four people in this ambulance. Yeah, because they acted the shiz out of this movie. Good God. And it's like, and what I want is a realistic cop chase. Sorry, we've seen them on television. They're boring as fuck. Like, there's a ton of cars, cop cars behind them, and they're clearing out the road in front of them, and they just let them drive. So as not to have all of the people getting in wrecks and dying, they pin them in and they keep them on a road and they just let them drive. We've seen it a hundred times on television. Why do we have to have this very odd out of character thing? Just let these four people in this ambulance be in this ambulance and act and have this moral dilemma of this brother that thought he was going to get into this easy heist to get the money for his wife. And the other one, who's just a touch of crazy and just a touch, just a touch. <laughs> And then this really Legit. badass freaking EMT chick with a cop that got shot on accident. And it, it would have been better for me if neither of the brothers had shot the cop, but they're still going to get blamed for this cop dying. Right. Even though they, so now you have all these, the stage is set for all this internal conflict between these two brothers who are obviously very close, which they did a great job of playing these two brothers against each other and together at the same time, like, the acting in this movie from those three main characters was absolutely outrageously good. And I wanted more of that instead of the action and weird shit that didn't excite me at all. In fact, I was like, this is stupid. Go I back hated to that the cop though in the ambulance. Oh, yeah. He's a little weasel. Yeah, I was, was like, annoying. let him die. He was an- <laughs> okay. This the well, he was only like three months out of the academy. Yeah, he's, a also, <laughs> he's a rook. Also, he's a rook. I'm sorry, but that hair clip that barely holds your hair. Up is not going to clamp this dude's freaking aorta. It's not happening. I was so annoyed by the medicine in this freaking movie. I was like, that hair well, clip. Not to mention the dude dying from infection. <laughs> yeah, fuck. 
when she's yeah, like that, that part was hard to watch. So like I don't think of myself as squeamish, but if you're elbows deep in some guy's spleen, just <laughs> pulling was this it apart. Rated was, R? Yeah, very oh, rated R. Oh. Okay, that's because uh, I as we were talking about the other movie we reviewed, because man, I will say it had a there's a scene in this movie that I had not seen before where they run over one of the oh the, yeah. the power, like Trent. What is Trent the IT my guy or whatever? Animal. I yeah. and, then, and then they pulled him out and I was like, well, I haven't seen that before. That was He's definitely new to me in cinema. What did that you do to my legs? legs. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, I mean, I, I mean, I yeah. shouldn't be saying it was a cool scene, but man, that was a memorable scene. I'd never seen that before. Uh-uh. It looked disturbing. Yeah, it was crazy. When they pulled him but out, I thought I was like, like that, what happened there with the banks, if they did a great job at the beginning showing the chaos of what would actually happen in a firefight because like they all had varying degrees of ways that they went down because that's how it's going to go down because at some point you're going to have so many SWAT and police people that there's going to be so many bullets flying. You're not getting out of that. You're just not. And the way that they, the brothers got into the ambulance, like to me, it was very believable. I was like, that was the one chance that they had and he was driving the truck and then they, they looked in and Taylor's like, well, how did they not see him? I was like, well, he's behind this. And like at some point, they're not going to look that hard mm-hmm. because they're going to trust the brother cops in there. The EMT was believable enough where they're not going to question why she's kind of cold because it's a high tense situation. Everyone's like on all that was awesome. Like mm-hmm. to that point, I was like, this is, we are on track to something really beautiful here. Cause it was not what I was expecting. And the, the brother's relationship where they did flashbacks to their childhood, man, that really worked for me. That's where I was came out of left field. I was like, I did not see that connection happening at all. I thought it was going to be them, maybe two military brothers that needed money and they were going to go do this together, but they were pitted. It was really well done up and through that point for another like 15 to 20 minutes. And then they needed, they just struggled on a way to like truly resolve how they wanted to get to the end with the whole kind of sacrifice, but the, the military brother was had good morals where the other brother was losing them. They just needed to get to it sooner. Yeah. Well, and I think that was like, as I was thinking about it, the way that it ended with them in front of the ER and like the big weird standoff and like the brothers turning on each other to a certain degree, I liked that ending and I liked the way that it got there, but I just think you could have taken out the whole, other gang involvement cartel piece. Mm -hmm. Like you could have taken that piece out for me. Like I didn't need that. The only cool part about that was like the, we're going to go left and I need to go right. And we should both go left. Like I thought that was pretty clever and fun to watch and wait, lay waste to these guys. But at the same time, like it was unnecessary. I think somewhere in there, the cop that was shot, that was in the ambulance could have found the gun and the brother get the one brother gets shot in the ambulance. And then they end up going, I just think they could have taken all the, they just did too much, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They Michael bait it and they tried to do way too much with way too many things. This could have been an hour and a half simple movie about four people in an ambulance who are all trying to do one thing being surviving after a shit show of a heist that, they did for different reasons, right? The ambulance, the EMT's there to save a life. The cop was there because he was trying to get a date and ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time, which I also was okay with. And then you got the two robbers. One's doing it because he's crazy and that's his livelihood. And the other's doing it to save his wife. Like I loved the dynamic of those people in the ambulance. It's all the other shit that annoyed me and I just didn't need it. I know that they can't do it, but when they pulled the switcheroony, I would have had them real quick drop off the EMT and the cop at a hospital, switch cars and go. And away they get. Yeah. I would have, I would, okay I would have done that. that. And then if you don't want to make the bad guys get away with it, you can pick them up later. Um, mm, because fair. they're scot free with the ambulance. And then it's, oh, no, we're not going to leave the cop and the EMT with the cartel. So they fuck themselves over by being good people. Yeah. And then they go back and forth between those morals like you were talking about. So I would just let them get away. And then if you want to circle back and take care of them, do it at the end or with a wrap up. And I would have been more yeah. okay with that than most of the shit we got. So I like the way it ended though. Cause to me, that's how it's really going to end. They're going to die. Like, sure. yeah, it, I will say the couple of things I was just chuckling to myself thinking about it again. Man, that gigantic thing of a dog. <laughs> like that, <laughs> yeah. so Nitro. That was, shit was <laughs> great. That was when the dog was in there, but then he had that little card too. I was like, man, so funny to me. Like that part was going to, I'm trying to think of the other thing that really got me to the interaction between the head 
cop that was calling the shots and that chick that was in the the car with the hot <laughs> Cheetos and stuff like this. They had little moments of interjection. Where I was like, you know, like I was not expecting this, but well done. And it showed kind of the the human side of the, and even the the two brothers listening to the music real fast and kind of reminiscing. I was like, another good emotional tie and connection there because I showed that earlier. Like things I wasn't expecting, but you know in time is of chaos and things like that, you're going to have those little random moments where you're laughing. You're like, Oh, this is funny. But then you realize, Oh, she is like, we're, we're in the middle of this. You got to get back to business kind of thing. But they did a really good job balancing some of that. Yeah. I like that music. Cause he's like, I need to chill out. I need to chill out. And then, you know, it cuts to the EMT and she's like looking at him. Cause you just hear them yeah. singing out loud. And she's like texting the FBI guy. Like these dudes are insane. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that moment. Like that's normally a moment I'm not a huge fan of, but that moment to me, and this goes back to Chris Fedak, even what you're talking about with Mattson with the dog and Alec with the dog, like in the, the real life moments, like the, if you get Cheeto dust on my hair, I'm going to like that shit. That's a testament to Chris Fedak writing because that's his bread and butter all day. It's just these mm. things that are so random, but they're random and real. Like I can see, two guys that are in this car chase. Cause again, as exciting as they make it seem in this movie, car chases are pretty boring. And so you're in this car chase, everything's super tense. You're fighting with each other and everybody else. And he goes to listen to some music and the, his brother, these guys have a close relationship. He hooked me up, man. And then they just start singing and they forget for a moment what's going on to me. That was so real. And then like, Alec, like you say, when it cut to the part where you can't hear the music and it's just them singing at the top of their lungs, I, that was a beautiful moment of movie making to me. Like one of my favorite parts of the whole movie, but they yeah, were I really like that a lot. <laughs> did, did, did you guys, the, the ending though, with how the paramedic decided to help the military brother and like that whole scene, I don't, I, I found myself kind of struggling a little bit because in, in, everyone else had written them off and just wanted them to die because of what had been done. And I could understand the cop circumstance and why nobody wants to help him. And like, you know, I'm probably going to be on their side of the fence because the dude just got like 20 people killed and who cares if he was just trying to do X, Y, and Z. He also made some really poor choices and put himself in this situation. And while I don't think it deterred from it, because it, they did well in the fact that it, she did it because she finally had an emotional connection with someone that she helped. And then they showed that scene of her going to visit the little girl that actually worked. I was like, you know, okay, like I'm going to, I'll take that conflict resolution, but I would have been okay with her trying to help the Marine, but then he ultimately just bled out and died right there. I think that would have been more believable, but I didn't have a problem with it as well. I liked her when she was jaded, <laughs> to be honest. Because I, I feel like, different. yeah, in order to be in those situations, you have to possess a little bit of that to where at the beginning when she's talking to her new partner, she's like, yeah, the worst day of their life is Tuesday afternoon for you. Yeah. Get over it. And it's like, you know, I, I can get behind that kind of thought process. I mean, you'd have to have maybe not to that extreme, but you'd have to have a little bit of that in your blood to, you know, work as an EMT or as a police officer in those intense situations to where you can't let it, you know, ruin your day or your week because the next day is going to be even worse. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you on both of those. I, and I think for me, Matson, what you're talking about is they didn't earn that emotional tie to me. Like I was okay with it. In fact, I supported fully the way that that ended with, especially it being the partner after she said he saved your partner's life because they earned that line. Right. The problem with the rest of it is to me, they didn't earn her emotional attachment to him as much as they gave this. So when, what I mean is, is will and her to me, like that felt like a stretch. And again, this is where I feel like, and what they also didn't earn to me was the cop at the end, not outing will about being the one that shot him and saying, he saved my life. Like I get that. But at the same time, again, it, they didn't give me enough time with those four people in that ambulance to earn that, not fully anyway. I, I'm okay with it. I would fully support the way this movie ended. From the time they leave the cartel area, that he gets shot or what will get shot in the shoulder and giving all the blood to the cop has made him deal with that way worse. Like I'm okay with everything after that. The problem is it could have been even better if we had a little more emotional tie-in 
based on spending more time again in this ambulance, letting the cop interact with these two idiots. When he wakes up, instead of going to the extreme of them rupturing his spleen and having all these dramatic, I mean, you needed that drama and you needed a reason for him to need all the blood, but have him be awake and have him being interacting. Hey, like trying to save his own life and having that battle with him between, you know, do I use this gun under my leg or do I try to convince them, look, I'll put in a good word for you. We'll try to keep this as minimal as possible. Just take me to a hospital, right? I'm I'm dying Mm -hmm. here. And so I just think there could have been so much more that makes that buy that payoff in the end more worth it than what it was, even as good as it was. So it just, God, that's what the, the frustrating part about this movie is it was on the verge of being maybe one of the best movies I've seen this year so far, but it just missed it because of all the over the top shit that was going on. That just wasn't necessary for the story. And I need, I realize you need some of that because I think without some of it, like to Madsen's points early, early on, they made this bank heist so exciting and so tense. And part of that I think is because they didn't show like most bank heists, you see the robbers running in with the guns and everybody get down. They didn't show any of that. They showed it after that had already happened. And so there's this level of tension that's already there. I think if you make all that stuff early on in the beginning and then you slow it down and let the last half be this emotional character driven piece, I think you could have had a really, really good movie on your hands instead of a mediocre one. So you ready for me to ruin the podcast? Sure. When Will hits the cop and says, go to sleep. Yeah. Lost city. Channing Tatum. Oh, God damn it. Why would you do that to me? (laughs) Go to sleep. (laughs) I told you I was going to ruin the podcast. I gave you fair warning. That part was funny. See, and all I thought about was uh, Iron Man punching Hulk. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. (laughs) That's all I thought about. (laughs) I feel like we need to give a shout out to Jake Gyllenhaal. For me, he provided the, the right level of suave and kind of confidence, but well as you could start to see the cracks in his army became crazier and crazier and started straight towards LT, his dad and the tendencies there. Cause it sounds like a lot of it was probably hereditary. Now, if you gotta be honest there. And I like that, like by the end of where he was trying to go out and use her as a human shield. And, and I believed he was going to shoot her. He's going to do it. And she felt it. His brother felt it. That's why he shot him. Jake Gyllenhaal did a good job. He's always good at those kind of like, talk your way through things like the bank part where he was, I've seen him in a lot of movies and he always so well with that. So believable kind of being the smooth talker. But then when things got crazier and he's trying to take control, the craziness kind of jumped out of himself. And I, I appreciated what he brought to the table in this movie. I thought he did a pretty good job overall. And I, I didn't think he detracted one bit. Mm -mm. And I love Jake Gyllenhaal. He's one of my probably top 10 actors of my time watching movies like all the way back to like weird shit like Donnie Darko and the one he did about the kid that in like the rocket kid that I can't think of the name of the movie right now but like like even as a kid I enjoyed him he also did a really stupid movie that I can't like it's so bad but it's called Bubble Boy I don't know if either of you ever heard of this movie <laughs> or seen it. it's literally about a kid trapped in one of those like bubbles because he's got some Disney. Oh, okay. And it's raw comedy and it's dumb humor. It's like one of the only stupid humor movies that I like fully get into. It, it's so stupid. But yeah, like I've always really liked Jake Gyllenhaal. And I think my favorite part of him is like that balance of really cool and smooth. Like you talk about Matson, and then he switches to fucking psycho really well and like unhinged. I really, really enjoy him. So. I was glad he was in it. He was the main reason I wanted to watch this movie. That and who this newcomer, Isaac Gonzalez, man, I wish she'd get in and just a, a, an amazing movie because she's been great in everything we've seen her in. But there's Does just knives out. No, I wish she that's was not in that her. chick. No, that's uh, damn it. I can't think of her name either. No, Isaac Gonzalez she's was uh, KT, KT in Bloodshot. <laughs> And then oh. she was also in Godzilla versus Kong. Like she oh, was gosh. the bad, like the chick that gets killed, like in the under whatever. And then she was in Hobbs and Shaw. 
She was in the. She needs to get a better agent. That's she what I'm saying. Like, she's been in all these terrible ass movies, but she's fun to watch in these terrible ass movies. Like, I really like her. I just wish she'd be in a good movie. <laughs> 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 this is as close to a good movie as she's been in, I think. So, and I, yeah, those, everybody that was in the ambulance except the fucking cop, he was annoying. But what can you do, right? Yeah. The most. In- unbelievable thing for me in this movie was how full the LA river was. That is ridiculous. <laughs> there is never that much water in that river. I did uh, laugh so. at the line though. We're in the fucking LA river. Where do you want me to go? <laughs> but water. <laughs> There's no water in that river. That's a big old fat lie. That's propaganda fair. from Michael Bay. That's fair. That's is fair. that really the LA river though? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's really the LA river. Yeah. That's There's what that's called. Any water LA river. In no. That's the point. That's the joke. Yeah. That's hilarious. It's more like a drainage ditch than it is <laughs> anything else. <laughs> we talked about it in the spoiler free, but Michael Bay's created this new drone program that was all. So I, it's pretty cool if you didn't use it a thousand times in the film, but they have these 3D scan the city, okay, or this building, and then they put it in this program and then it programs this drone with this camera to fly a certain pattern around this building and around the city. And they did it where it flew through the window of a car and shit like that. And so they've got their actual cameras, the ones that are on the rigs and then the handhelds and the steady cams and all that shit. And then they have this one that they've programmed the set. They've done this program, all these cars and shit into this computer program. They hit enter or whatever it is on this camera. And this drone just flies through the set and the That's actors cool. just do what they do and the drone will fly exactly where it's supposed to, to get the shots that they want. Hmm. Dope ass technology. If you didn't make it feel like, like a superhero fucking... movies and such really paying off in spades. And I think like for me, it would have been cool. Like in, if you were to do like a heist movie and they were stuck in the bank, like having it fly through like different angles of the bank to show yeah. like upper shots and shit like that. Like all of that would have been really cool. I just didn't love that. He used it 19 times to fly up and down a skyscraper. Yeah. Like it'd be good for epic scenes. Like even a battle scene for like, think about like a movie I love, like Braveheart. If you could take that technology back then and have it kind of weave in and out of the battlefield and circle around Mel Gibson or things like that, mm-hmm. you can really see some strong application, but in a movie like this, you use things like that, like one to three times. Yeah. Just enough to have it be worth it, as opposed. What are you, to what are you cheesing out over there, Alec? We were laughing at your reference. Braveheart. Yeah, you connected it to Mel Gibson because <laughs> he calls that dude with the goatee Mel Gibson. Yeah. Like that's what he <laughs> calls that dude <laughs> because he looks like Braveheart. <laughs> I thought you were doing that shit that. on purpose. <laughs> Me too. I was like, what a great I fucking tie-in. Oh. Uh, I probably subconsciously, my brain did connect that. If yeah. we could use more than 10% of our brains, I probably did that, right? Absolutely. No, I was great. That's <laughs> why I started laughing. And I look up at Alec and he's cheesing. I was like, look at Matson bringing in the tie into the movie and shit. Like, well played, Drop sir. Dropping that was a bombs. good jump, though. Um, no, best one for me that Alec already said it. That was the Birkenstock ones. Like that one, I was yeah, like, it was, was funny right there. Um, I think if it were up to me, there's a 25 minute, the whole part with the cartel. And I don't even think it was a cartel. It was just some guy, like some gangster that worked for the dude's dad, but like these completely and utterly ridiculous characters that just to me weren't necessary. And now we have a two hour and 16 minute movie that if you cut that part out, you're an hour and 55 minutes. Right. And probably shorter than that. Cause all the shit where they're having the conversations, but that whole scene added nothing to me other than a cool fight, like gun scene where they're spinning around shooting everybody. Like that was the only part. And then like you said, he's not my real brother. He's my fake brother. He's my real brother. And then clips that dude. And, but it, to me, that was just so unnecessary and actually pulled me out of the movie. Like I'm sitting there going, why would you even go here? Like you're in the clear, just drop that fucking ambulance and run, like steal a car or something. Don't go to their freaking, and then leave the money in a drop. Like they can pick it up. So anyway, I had a hard time with that. I think that I was my say, 
that go left, go right scene, like their comedy movies, take note because I want that same type of verbiage. And then for some, he, when he says go left, go left, they both end up going left. And then one of them like shoots their buddy in like the foot or something like, and then they argue like, you said go left, go right. But I got like, <laughs> yeah. you just see that in some comedy with some funny people doing that. And like, that would be a funny scene to me Yeah, <laughs> where they're, they're both supposed to go the other way and they end up coming and they're like, shoot yeah. one of your buddies in like the foot. <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that I don't think Will Smith will ever work again in Hollywood, I could see it in a bad boys movie. <laughs> yeah, actually that would be a great bad boys scene. You could totally, yeah. or like maybe not even shoot the person, but you like, you come close to shooting them. Yeah. yeah that would be a fun. Yeah. Movie. Like Martin movie Lawrence goes fun. right instead of left. And like Will Smith has to duck real quick and be like, I told you to fucking go left. <laughs> so that would like be the, funny. Yeah. I could see that. I do think they yeah. could have maybe taken out, like you were saying, JJ, taking out that cartel part. But I also wouldn't have been upset if they put in some of maybe Will in Afghanistan or show his mm-hmm. driving capabilities. Yeah. Because it's, they bring it up, you know, he's the best driver, he's all this stuff. We don't really see it until he gets behind the wheel in the ambulance. And even the cops are talking about like, whoa, this guy's like great. He's pulling out these military maneuvers. Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. F1 driver. So I wouldn't have been upset if they kept the runtime, but replaced maybe those sure. cartel scenes was so showing a little bit of will his skills, you know, maybe do a little clip of him in Afghanistan, pulling out his driving skills. Yeah. To show a little bit of that. And to build on that, or, what Matt's was talking about too, where they showed, cause I liked those little shots with the kids too. Cause there was no talking. It just showed that emotional cause they were playing mm-hmm. together or whatnot and all the different areas. I think it would have made sense too. Like if you had cut to like both of them in the past, like how did Danny, you know, becoming a thug versus, yeah, I like that idea. Or they could have shown his driving skills and one of the previous heists, but way back in the day when they did that maneuver, uh, things like that. I still think they needed to cut the runtime now, but I really liked what they did with the kids though, because there was no dialogue, but if you, Mm -hmm. the emotional ties there were strong, very, Mm -hmm. very, very strong. And I, that was a great job. Really solid there. And even the tie-in, like the weird, because at first it was them like just playing, right? Like kind of like they were in the beginning. And then the last scene where he's like the sheriff and he's shooting his brother and Mm -hmm. they're having the shootout, like it fit the actual narrative of the movie so that they're both laying there on the ground having this memory. Other than the music scene where they were singing and having that moment together, I thought that was one of the best emotional Mm tie-ins for the movie that actually gave their relationship as adults life. And so that's yeah. like, if they had just the runtime was down, JJ's right though. Like this could have been one of the best movies of the year. Cause the, the acting, like you take some of the car scene and just the length, the rest of it, you take that away. My complaints about this movie were really just, it was the same thing over and over towards the end, but you cut down 25, 30 minutes. We're solid. Yeah. I think that's the hardest part for me is this movie is I, there are parts that I love so much about this movie and then there's just things that pull you out of what you love. And I, the story's great. The acting was phenomenal. And I think if you just give it, just go minimalistic with it and hit the points that are important and what makes sense, I think this is a phenomenal movie. This is the ultimate movie you put on in the background. And there'll be like five or six scenes that you'll sit down and watch that five minute thing. And then you'll go back to what you're doing and come back because there's clearly parts we've talked about you can miss, but there's parts that you'd be like, yeah, I got to see this. Yeah. And even at, even to Alex's point with Isaac Gonzalez's character, with Cam, the Cam character, like normally that's a part of a movie where I'm like, Jesus, will you just end already? Or she's going to see the little girl. But I thought mm-hmm. that actually had payoff to me. Like that's the it one emotional piece along with the brothers that I was like, that makes sense for what this character has been through over the last day for her to go and see this little kid. Like, I, yeah, God, it could have been so goddamn good. And it's just, good instead of phenomenal which is sad all right should we rate this thing yeah i was gonna say i feel like i've i've gotten all that i can get out of this movie but it's good cool yeah let's rate it i'll go first i'm so torn on this movie i had no idea what i'm gonna rate it even to this moment so i'm gonna talk about it for just a second before i decide (laughs) i really enjoyed so much of this movie and then i really was annoyed by so much else and it's just michael bay I think Michael Bay should be a producer and be able to like provide some of these insights because he's come up with some cool technology. He's come up with some great ideas for how to film movies. But when it comes to him directing a movie, like he just doesn't know how to edit himself. And he just thinks I have to put 
everything that I can in a movie. And that's what makes a great movie. And we've learned through 19 Transformer movies and five Bad Boys movies, that's not what makes movies great. But he did touch on some things that do make. And I think I give more credit and maybe incorrectly, I don't know, but I don't give a shit. It's my right to have that be my opinion right now. I give Chris Fedak more credit for the good parts of this movie than Michael Bay because the writing and the character driven pieces and the character development throughout mostly comes from the writer more often than not. And the actors, both of which to me were very, very good. I'm going to give this movie a two and a half. I want to give it more. It probably deserves more, but I think what detracts and annoys me from this movie keeps it from being a good movie. It's good. It's average. I just think there's so many things that are better. And I think this movie had the ability to be outstanding. I would have loved to have seen maybe a Sean Levy direct this movie instead of fuck. Cause with Chris Fedak writing and Sean Levy directing, I think the comedy, the humor would still be there and still be real. And I think the serious parts would have had more payoff and you wouldn't have had the extra stuff. So there's my opinion on it. I'm going to give it a two and a half for better or worse. I enjoyed probably more of this movie than I thought I was going to. So I thought JJ was going to be a little higher than that. All right. I thought about it. All right, Matson. Yeah, I've been waffling between like a two, two and a half and a three. But man, this is definitely a, like a movie that's a solid. It's hard to say it's, it's a solid two and a half or three. But as you've heard us talk about from pretty much everybody, like this is a great movie. The potential was there. Even the really the detracting things are just the length of it. It's almost like if you could just go and edit out the drug cartel stuff and just watch the rest of this movie. There's a lot. I, probably be still a great movie and we'd probably rate it higher. And then I just think I really liked how the, this movie at the beginning showed and portrayed what a bank heist looks like, the tense nature behind it and the, the believability of how they got into the ambulance. I was spot on. Like I, I, I was hard pressed to find plugs or holes in the way that they got there, which I think is, is really difficult to do. It was just the execution on getting to the resolution where they could have cut some time out. And so for that matter, I'm going to go a, a 2.5 as well. As you heard me talk about, this is a movie definitely could see myself watching again more in the background because there's the car scene chases and things like that, that I don't need to sit down for the whole thing again, but the acting with inside the ambulance, uh, the brother's relationship the, with the paramedic and things as well, really solid and enjoyed watching that. Cool. All right, Alec, bring us home. Yeah. Michael Bay sucks. Yeah. Um, I counted on my own like three references to past movies that he's done. I forgot about that. Like there's the, that's me, right? So I'm sure that there's a dozen more that I just didn't catch, but there was the Sean Connery in the rock rock. right at the beginning. And then there was that whole go left. That's straight out of Pearl Harbor. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I just don't like Michael Bay. Just not. Was, he made a Bad Boys reference in there, too. Yeah. The, one I, of the cops said something about Bad Boys as well. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, but Jake Gyllenhaal was such a great character and the way he plays it and, you know, trying to live up to his dad, but not be his dad and kind of being torn between those two extremes. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give it a three and I'm going to put most of that on Jake Gyllenhaal and then the people in the ambulance for sure yeah i was close i two and a half three is where i was sitting i could have given it a three two and a half and i wouldn't have lost any sleep over it i just wanted more because it could have been so good i, think I was, was gonna give biggest. it a three and a half but i didn't want matt to yell at me again <laughs> <laughs> i love it well there it is two and a half and three you know again a little bit above average average movie I think it's worth seeing, especially when you're able to watch it in the comfort of your own home. And I think you'll miss out on some of the action, but that's not the best part of this movie. Um, So anyway, there it is. Next week, we'll be reviewing This Is Where I Leave You, getting back to where we're not going to do just new movies. So this this is one of my favorites. So if you sit down and watch this movie and don't like it, I'm sorry, but we can't be friends or even related anymore i'm just kidding um so yeah this is why, this is why everybody, i know right with that yeah matson tell everybody where they can find us yeah don't forget about what pot chaser is doing this mm. month with uh leaving reviews they'll they'll donate 50 cents to chef for ukraine uh which is a great effort just to support what's going on over there so if you get on pod chase and leave us a review we'll respond now and that'll be a total of 50 cents so come out and support a great cause we'd love to hear from you you can find us wherever good podcasts are found 
Apple, Spotify, to name a few, pretty much anywhere else, just search What's Our Verdict. And then you can check us out on Facebook and social and Instagram as well, as well as YouTube for Spoiler Freeze. We're definitely around and appreciate you all taking some time to listen and continue to try and find you some good movies. Definitely. I appreciate that message. All right. There it is. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Cinematic out.